Hey everybody, it's Ron from Pick Dogs. This is Ron's Bank Shop Breakdown. We're going to go over five college basketball games for Friday, November 17th, 2023. Now, if you like what you see, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to put your college basketball picks in the comment section below. And if you're looking for my best bets, including my $19 Bank Shop best bet, as well as my all-access season pass in college basketball, you can find those at the premium picks tab at pickdogs.com. Alrighty, let's get into it. Here are the games for Friday in college hoops. First up, it's Abilene Christian taking on San Jose State. It's going to be a 3.15 Eastern start time on ESPN+. Plus. It's a neutral site game in the Paradise Jam Tournament in the Virgin Islands. Now, I think there's a really good matchup for Abilene Christian just based on the way it plays defensively under Brett Tanner. Very aggressive defense. They force a lot of turnovers. They take a lot of fouls. But San Jose State, a team that under Tim Miles has had issues turning the ball over, and that was with Amari Moore the last couple of seasons, one of the better guards in the Mountain West. He's no longer on the roster, so this team's already having some even bigger issues turning the ball over just under 23% of the time to start the year. That's 325th in the nation. And San Jose State, also a team that doesn't really get to the free throw line very often so, so far under Tim Miles. It's just not been what this team looks to do. They're more slow-paced offensively. I think Abilene Christian's going to push the tempo here, and I think it's just a bad matchup for San Jose State. Now, defensively, I do think Abilene Christian might not you know, have a huge day offensively here. San Jose State is a solid defensive team so far this year. I mean, we saw what they did against Texas Tech, 56 points given up against a Big 12 team. Really impressive, but I think Abilene Christian's best offense is going to be on the fast break off of those turnovers. Wouldn't be surprising to see him force 15 to 20, maybe even more turnovers. Should lead to some fast break opportunities on the other, on the other end of the court. I'm going to take Abilene Christian here. They're right now actually an underdog at the opening line. We'll see where this line finishes up, but give me Abilene Christian on the money line. Next up, we see Georgia and Miami. This one, 3.30 Eastern on CBS Sports Network. Another neutral site game. We see plenty of those this weekend with a lot of tournaments going on. This one in the Bahamas. Now, Miami's got a lot of neutral site experience, neutral court experience in the recent years with its runs in the NCAA tournament. Of course, last year going to the Final Four, even the year before that, making a solid run as the 10th seed in the NCAA tournament. And this is an experienced team, a team that defensively is not the best. You know, they're ranked 101 in the nation right now in adjusted defensive efficiency, but a team that can score a lot of points in a hurry. We've already seen them score 85 or more in the first three games. They haven't played the toughest schedule, but still a nice win over UCF a couple games ago uh, back on November 10th. Georgia, I don't really love Mike White at coach. I think he's a good recruiter. He brings in a lot of talent, but on the court, he's just not my favorite coach to back, especially in these neutral site or road games. Last year, Georgia, they only had three neutral site or road victories, and all three of those were against teams outside the top 150 in Ken Palm. They had some opportunities. They played a true road game against Wake Forest in non-conference play. They played UAB and Georgia Tech in a neutral site game and a true road game there. SEC play, they played you know, obviously plenty of true road games in the SEC. Couldn't pull off a big-time upset on the road against some of the better teams. Their only road win in conference play was against Ole Miss, who was one of the you know weaker teams in the conference. So I just don't trust this team away from home. I think that Miami has the much better offense, the much more trustworthy offense. And you know while the defense, like we like we said, you know against FIU giving up 80 points, not what you want to see. I just don't think George is the type of team to exploit that. So I'm going to take Miami here and lay the reasonable number. Next up, it's Davidson and East Tennessee State. This one's 7 o'clock Eastern on ESPN+. Plus. Now, Davidson's off to a pretty good start to the year. 2-1 and one record. They have the nice upset win over Maryland at the neutral site. We took them plus the points in that game as a double-digit underdog. They won 64-61. to They lost to Clemson by three points. Really not a bad loss there against a solid ACC school. However, where I have an issue with Davidson in this ballgame is the fact that they're laying points on the road. It's just a defense I don't really trust. Nor, and the offense is also one-dimensional, really relying on that three-point jumper. We know Davidson teams in the past have done the same, but this team right now is ranked 319th in two-point field goal percentage. Just not where you want to be when you're laying points on the road. I know East Tennessee State... Ugly performance against Butler in its last game, but I do think this team's a lot better than that final score. I think they're improving as a program overall. I like the fact they don't take too many fouls, so Davidson really going to have to rely on those three-point jumpers. I don't think they're going to get to the free-throw line much. I don't think they're going to have too much success inside the paint, so it's going to be you cash in on your threes, or you have a chance of losing this game outright, in my opinion. They're turning the ball over a good amount of times. The rebounding numbers aren't the best, especially on the defensive end. So I think there's value with East Tennessee State, kind of a buy-low spot with the Buccaneers after that really bad loss to Butler. Give me the points here with East Tennessee State at home. Next up, we see Valparaiso taking on Illinois. This one, 8 p.m. Eastern. To me, this looks like a good spot for Illinois to bounce back from its loss to Marquette and earn a feel-good home blowout win. You know, Illinois lost 71-64 against a good Marquette team last game at home. 
And, uh, you know, they have a big advantage on both sides of the ball in this ballgame. Valparaiso has played one of the weakest schedules in Division I hoops out of teams that have actually played Division I teams to start the year. They opened the season with a subdivision opponent in Trinity Christian. They won that game, but then they played IUPUI. They lost that game to its, a program that's been struggling mightily the last couple of years. And then they played Green Bay, another team that's been right there with IUPUI. Green Bay right now 352nd in uh, Ken Palm ranking. So Valparaiso has not played a road game this season. All three of those games were at home. And they haven't played really a tough opponent. And this is going to be their first one. Valparaiso, 357th in adjusted offensive efficiency. The defense is not much better. And I actually think there's some room for regression defensively as teams are not really shooting well against Valpo. But I don't think it's because of their defense. I just think it's because of their opponent. Um, Illinois should be able to score in the 80s, 90s here. That should be enough for a cover at home. Give me Illinois laying the big number at home. Next up, the final game we're going to talk about for the Friday card in college basketball. It's Belmont and Arizona, 11 p.m. Eastern on the Pac-12 Network. Now, if this was the Belmont team from 2021 or 2022, I think they'd be worth a look in a game like this against Arizona. I think they could keep up offensively. But this year, I think it's a rebuilding year for Casey Alexander's team. He's a really good head coach, and they'll be fine in a couple years. But this season, just not as talented on paper. And we saw them in their first real step-up game of the season against Furman on the road, 99-76, the final score in that one. Now you're facing an Arizona team that's even faster offensively and stronger, much stronger offensively than Furman. Arizona should score in the upper 90s, if not the hundreds in this game, is just because of their fast-paced offense and Belmont being ranked 247th in adjusted defensive efficiency. They've been one of the worst rebounding teams in college basketball to start the year. Offensively, it's been the saving grace for this program in recent years, but this year just not as talented. Like I said, they're ranked 286 to start the season in three-point shooting. Usually Belmont teams, really good three-point shooting teams, but I just don't think they keep up in a game like this. I think Arizona wins and wins big. Give me the Wildcats laying the points to end the night. And that's it. Those are the games we're going to talk about for Friday in college basketball. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. And don't forget to put your college basketball picks in the comment section below. Again, if you're looking for my best bets, you can find those at Pick Dogs Premium. As always, this is Ron Romanelli. Good luck.